for five minutes. I thank the speaker. I rise today to support the economic engine of America, our small businesses. Small businesses represent more than 99% of all businesses in this country and employ more than 50% of the private sector non-farm workforce. In fact, 25% of the total job growth from 1992 to 2005 came from those small businesses with fewer than 20 employees represented 25% of the total growth from 1992 to 2005. For all businesses, large and small, the employment growth rate during that period was 19%, demonstrating that small businesses led the way to economic growth. Simply put, the health of America's small businesses is the health of the American economy. Unfortunately, the cost of keeping the employees of small businesses healthy is imperiling the financial health of many of these same businesses. Under our current health care system, where larger companies pool their risks over larger workforces to purchase insurance for lower rates, small businesses are paying up to 18% more per employee for health care coverage than their larger competitors. Sadly, it's easy to see how this happens. Indianapolis small businessman Bruce Hedrick testified at a House committee hearing earlier this year with his wife and his business partner, Pam. She got cancer, and the insurance company said the premiums for the 15-person firm would rise 28%. When his wife tragically passed away one month prior to the higher premium taking effect, the insurance company still increased the entire firm's premium by 10%. Due to the current health care system, one illness in a small business can have drastic consequences for everybody. In fact, from 1999 to 2007, for all businesses large and small, the employer contribution for health insurance coverage for families increased 120%, from $4,247 to $9,325. Employees did not fare any better, as their own individual premiums increased almost 118% in that time period. While large businesses were better situated to keep costs down due to bigger risk pools, reduced administrative costs and lower insurance broker fees, small businesses often have but one unpalatable option with respect to health care. More and more small businesses are unable to afford health insurance for their employees. In 1999, 68% of small businesses offered health care. Only 38% offered health care this year. While just 10% of employers, employees at large businesses are uninsured, 29% of employees at firms with fewer than 25 employees have no health insurance. Those small businesses that currently offer health care often are forced to reduce benefits due to those increasing costs. Family deductibles are roughly 60% more for companies with fewer than 50 employees. Without reform, Madam Speaker, small businesses will have to continue reducing benefits and increasing costs. According to the National Business Group on Health, in 2010, and I quote, employers and employees will face shockingly higher health care costs. Madam Speaker, those premiums are projected to increase another 10 to 20 percent next year. This small, small, this year, small businesses will pay 156 billion for their employees' health care. Without reform, those costs will more than double to 339 billion by 2018, just nine years hence. Over the next decade, small businesses will suffer the cumulative impact of these increased costs of between 546 and 855 billion dollars. In other words, Absent reform, small businesses' health care costs will hit $2.4 trillion in this time period. As they have done over the last few years, small businesses will be forced to choose between their economic health and the health of their employees. Without health care reform, the increased costs over the next decade will force many small businesses to lay off employees. Those increased costs represent uh, up to 178,000 employees. 178,000 Americans who can lose their jobs because their employers can no longer afford the cost of health care. 57% of existing small businesses already have had to eliminate health care coverage and more soon will be forced to do the same. 29% of small business employees have no insurance of any kind. According to the Kaiser Family Foundation's recent survey, 8% of existing businesses said they will eliminate health care entirely this year next year. Increasing health care costs are crippling our small businesses and small business employees. Although every company faces increasing costs, 
Under the existing health insurance system, the economic burden falls disproportionately on small businesses. Madam Speaker, I support health insurance reform that will lower the cost of health care to these small businesses and their employees. And I urge the gentleman's time has expired. Thank you.